The purpose of this little video is to give you a quick nuts and bolts tour of the library and to show you how to use it. If you'd like to have more information about where the books came from or have more details about the things that I'm talking about, I hope that you'll take the time to watch this little video on the homepage, What is Libraries of Hope? Also notice there's a lot of training for moms in the Well-Educated Heart part of the site which can be accessed easily up here in the menu bar. Here's the introductory course or the Mother's University. But for today, let's just go to the library section. There are over 4,000 living books here, most of which you can read online for free. The easiest way to access it is from the menu bar, and you can select either categories or rotation. Let's take a look at the categories page first. Here you will see that the books are organized by American history topics arranged chronologically. You have nations and regions of the world arranged chronologically, types of biographies, you've got nature topics, the Mother's University topics arranged alphabetically, and pay special attention to these other categories because a lot of these books can only be accessed on this categories page such as the art appreciation, music appreciation, the character traits, and poetry selections. So sometimes you'll want to come to the categories page even if you're doing the rotation schedule. Let's go ahead and access it through the rotation. It's the same books, just, uh, just you arrive at them through a different page. If you don't know what the rotation schedule is all about, then you'll want to go through the intro course and you'll understand. If you click on either an American history topic or one of the countries, one of the nations of the world topics, it's going to take you to a landing page that looks like this. This is where I archive podcasts. If I've done a podcast on that particular topic, I give you a little brief overview of the kinds of things that you might want to talk about that month. And as all good librarians do, I give you a few book spotlights that uh, you might want to take a look at. Also notice here that there's a book list that you can print out if you want to have just a copy of all the books found in that particular uh, section arranged alphabetically. You can print that out here. Or there is an entire uh, list that you can purchase in our store. Let's choose elementary. The most important thing to understand is you don't want to click on the title. You want to click on the icons because it's only through the icons that you're going to be able to access the book. The little heart tells us that this is a public domain book and we're going to go into Internet Archive. We're, we're going to be able to read this book online. If you don't like reading on tablets, if you scroll down the page, there is an option right here to print out a PDF of that, of that book and you can have a paper copy. But I like to just enlarge the screen and I can just read the books just like this on the computer. And if the fonts are too small, I just do a single page option and I can scroll down like this. If you click on either of these two, the zoom in or zoom out, you can make the font larger or smaller and if you're viewing this on your tablet, the single page option is, is awesome. You can easily and conveniently just read these books on your tablet. Now, if you click on one of the diamond books, it also will take you to Internet Archives, but these books are not in the public domain and they cannot be printed out. Because they are still in copyright, you have to borrow the books, which you can easily do by clicking on the little bar underneath the book and it takes about one minute to register your name and get a library card so to speak and then um, you can just click right here and borrow the book you can keep it for 14 days and then just return it sometimes you have to be put on a wait list and um, they'll notify you through email that the book is available but I have never had to wait very long there the dollar sign will take you to Amazon and uh, this is, if you're wanting to buy a copy of the book, this will tell you where you can get used copies of the books or new copies of the books. 
And I like to go on Amazon because I like to scroll down and read what people are saying about the books. I learn a lot about books that way. As you go through the pages, you will notice little red arrows from time to time, and this alerts you that there is an audio version of that book. If you click on it, it will take you to LibriVox, where you can listen to the book for free. Now the books that are in the peach and the lavender sections, these are selections from my book house and junior classics. You cannot click on these. These don't have a direct link to anywhere. These are just here for your convenience that if you own these books, this will alert you that there are stories pertaining to that month's topic and this is where you can find them. The forgotten classics are found in the blue bar and if you don't know what that is, go through the introductory course and you'll you'll understand but if you will go down to the bottom of the page on any page that you're on there is a little blue bar here and if you click on it it will take you to a page where all of the forgotten classics are found and if you click on any of these it will bring you to a free digital version for you to read or if you prefer hard books in hand you can just click here and buy them in the store. If you're familiar with the Delphian course an easy way to access the free digital version is to click on the yellow bar at the bar bottom and then just scroll down to the bottom of that page and look for the yellow field and here are icons you can click on to access the free digital version or the hard copies are also available in our store. Notice that at the bottom of every page there is a search field and you can enter in a topic or a title or author and it should help get you to a page so you can find the book. Now let's scroll back up to the top of the page and go take a look at the enrichment page. First thing you'll find is a Pinterest, a Pinterest page full of ideas of crafts and fun things that you can make and do with your kids. Or if you pick the food selection, it has recipes and, and, and uh, food that you can cook. Next, you're going to find some plays. I tried to organize these so that if you're looking for, for plays for younger children, they're going to come first and older children are later. These are just very simple plays that you can use for a reader's theater or your kids can put on. Just um, something fun to do. And if you click on, the, on these, it's going to take you back to Internet Archive where you can see the play and you can just print out the pages that you need so that you can give a script to all the people that are participating. Next you'll find a lot of movies if I could find them and um, there's a lot of old cheesy classics in here. Uh, there's modern, there's just a good variety of movies for you to choose from and if you click on any of these images it's going to take you into IMDB where you're where you can find out more about the movie, get some reviews, you can find out, I can watch this one on Prime Video if you're a member of Prime, and uh, most importantly if you come into here um, and scroll down you can find the Parents Guide and view the content advisory. I haven't watched all these movies so I leave it to you to decide if this is an appropriate movie for your family or not. Going down the page, next we have art images. I've got them divided into family or home images and historical images. If you click on that, it's going to take you to another Pinterest page where you can quickly view different options. And if you double click on any of these, it's going to take you right to Art Renewal where you can see a larger image and also where you can uh, print a high resolution image out to keep if you'd like. 
Finally, you have some music options. The first ones are just YouTube. Click on any of these and they'll play music for you. You'll see music performed by orchestras all over the world. Um, I even found, uh, sometimes I found music that was performed by the composers themselves. You can listen to Debussy playing some of his own music. So just a lot of uh, fun options there. And if you go down a little bit further, the music and story options, if you click on the YouTube, it will play the music. But if you go and click on the, on the link beneath it, it's going to take you to some program notes from the old North Carolina Symphony Youth Comfort Concerts that they give. And um, here's just some simple little details about the music or a little story about the composer that you can use to for a quick music appreciation lesson with your kids to enhance what they're listening to. So there you have it. Um, I encourage you to look around the site. There's lots more. But uh, I hope that this gives you a good start.